I'm a luck dragon. My name is Falcor, and you're on a quest. John here, guys, and today we're talking about the Foxier Falcor micro camera. Now, this camera is 12. 100 TVL lines and can do GWDR um, image transfer. This is a CMOS camera. It has a 1.8 uh, lens and it is incredible. Now, if I had three wishes for FPV, the first one would be. And my first wish is. for an ultimate camera. Now, as I'm showing some of the footage of this thing, take a look at how beautiful this thing is. How beautiful is this image? It's just simply stunning. It is an order of magnitude beyond any other camera that I've seen. Now, prior to this, my two best cameras as far as image quality would have had to be the Eagle Micro by Runcam and the Foxier Micro Monster. Now, out of those two, I actually preferred the Micro Monster slightly uh, because the casing was a little bit more standard size. It was smaller, less prone to damage. And so that would have been my camera of choice. Now, do I like this? Like it? Falco is wonderful! Uh, I mean, this thing is wonderful it's just incredible and but let's before i continue let's bring up the elephant in the room the ugly thing nothing is perfect and this thing is as beautiful as the image is the latency issues with this camera are real now there's been much debate on this back and forth on the facebook groups about is this camera actually flyable at all and how are you supposed to fly with this thing with luck <laughs> you know the latency is very very real now if you are a freestyle that does light freestyle that flies um trying to do tricks in areas that you know well and you're just kind of repeating the same moves that's probably fine um but if you are a racer if you want to do racing with this camera i'm gonna have to say that it's almost all but impossible the difference in timing compared to like the predator which is probably what i would say the best racing camera or even the monster monster micro which is kind of in between is very very um apparent i mean this is really all but unflyable except for that light freestyle and where you don't need split second timing now i flew this back to back against um the monster micro and the predator now as you can see i've mounted this falcor on my massive drone or i didn't put it on a full-size quad because i knew that there was going to be some um latency differences in there and i didn't want to put it on the fastest quad ever now this has 1507 motors and at only 136 grams it is still pretty dang fast um, but we'll show you some footage of it image wise it is far superior than anything else you've ever seen on the market and that's what makes this so tough i mean can i really truly recommend a camera like this to everyone Ugh. i i don't know i mean i almost think you're better off even just flying an old style swift on a full-size quad and just you know strapping your gopro to the top of it because but if you do want to be able to feast your eyes on the best image quality possible and you're not trying to hit gates now trust me i've i've set up many little courses before i practice them all the time um usually on something like the massive droner it's a little bit easier because it is a little bit slower but i couldn't hit hardly any gates with this thing it was just the timing was off now if you're just flying up in the air you're not likely to really see that difference and i i thought it was curious that a lot of people were saying that the latency is not a difference at all that they can even perceive now when i did go to do some freestyle with it that i'll show here a little bit um 
yeah, it is it is more difficult to see when you're in a larger area, when you're not hitting very small gaps, and it's probably fine if you if that's the way that you fly. That's not the way that I fly though. I do very little freestyle. Actually, this weekend I went to go do some because I thought this camera required it. And as you can see um, in the footage, I ended up hitting a light pole. I landed on top of a school and I had to do some quad rescue um, maneuvers. And uh, that was very tricky. I ended up having to get a rope, a couple bottles of water. I brought myself a wire hanger and a basketball and just tried a variety of things. Ended up the combo that worked the best was the small bottle of water tied onto the end of the rope. And I was able to get it down. So here's some more additional flight footage at the end. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Image wise, this is the best, make no mistake. But would I recommend it to racers? Absolutely not. Um, would I recommend it to bando flyers? Probably not either. If you're just doing basic freestyle and you want the best image possible, make no mistake, this is it. But be very careful um, because you may end up getting your quad stuck um, like I almost did somewhere that you're not going to be very easily able to retrieve it from. So thanks, guys.